Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Do you ever feel as if you're in a simulation of some sorts? Something where you're being controlled to speak? As if you're a puppet or something? Because that's how I felt when I was watching SpongeBob's Pineapple Playhouse. We've been there, watching SpongeBob episode 112, the camping episode from season 3, and saying, Damn, this is a great episode, but I wish the characters looked like puppets here. Whoever this we person is, I question what he or she wants out of life. So this is what happens when you crossbreed Spongebob and the Muppets. Spongebob's Pineapple Playhouse is a series of shorts that recreate some scenes from past Spongebob episodes with puppet props of some of the characters and have homemade painted backgrounds to sell the illusion. These things have debuted back in October of 2020 and there are currently 15 of these shorts as of July 22nd, 2023. They started out as being a series exclusively posted on the official Spongebob YouTube channel, but a few of them have actually aired on TV at some point. Not all of them, just a handful have actually been shared on TV. Spongebob supplementary material is nothing new by a long shot. Shorts based on the Spongebob series has been a thing ever since 2000, starting with the Astrology with Squidward shorts. I'm your Nicktoon astrologer Squidward, reminding you that psychics will tell you good things if you tip them well. Most Spongebob shorts are usually based on a special episode that Nickelodeon would be marketing heavily at the time prior to its release. However, unlike those shorts which were mostly original ideas, these are just recreations of past episodes with props and painted backgrounds. Most of these props still look like standard hand puppets, but they are manipulated with strings and wires similar to Potty the Parrot. There hasn't been a new one of these things in over a year, but that doesn't necessarily mean the series is done with as of September 2024, so why not take a look at what has currently released? Now there are 15 of these shorts, so there is quite a bit to talk about. I'm not going to go through each and every one and say every single line that was cut from each episode when reimagining them, because there isn't really much of a point to that. If you want to see them for yourself, they're already all over YouTube. So what I'm going to do is go through them in order of how they're listed on the Spongebob wiki, talk about notable scenes that were cut from each one, say anything significant I have to say about every short, and then wrap it up by talking about the Spongebob Pineapple Playhouse series as a whole. The first short in this series is a puppet version of episode 99, Wet Painters from Season 3. The original episode starts with the funny ritual where Spongebob and Patrick hurt themselves before Mr. Krabs intervenes and gives them an assignment. The puppet version starts off with Mr. Krabs giving Spongebob and Patrick the assignment of painting the inside of his house. After they go inside, they don't talk about moving stuff off the walls and the tarp scene is removed too. Even the meta humor about the time cards is gone as well. Thank god I don't have any time cards on me. Spongebob starts painting, and this scene is trimmed down to the point of just seeing the giant paint bubble. After Patrick blows a giant paint bubble and they combine, it just bursts without Patrick pumping it up with the air pump. After the paint explodes, Spongebob spots the paint on Krabs' dollar, and he and Pat fear for their asses. The scene of them trying to remove the paint is trimmed down, as well as Patrick putting the dollar in the vending machine and Spongebob yelling at him to stop. When Mr. Krabs comes home, he just turns on the light to see Spongebob hanging in front of his first dollar. That whole scene of Spongebob and Patrick trying to hide their mistakes as well as the Dollarama isn't featured here. Spongebob is also hanging sideways as a way to hide the puppet's legs since they don't have legs here. Luckily, Patrick's boo is still intact. Mr. Krabs licked the dollar clean and the short ends at the exact same pace as the original aside from Mr. Krabs' laughing line being omitted. Okay, so that one... I think it's fine, but it was streamlined immensely and does show how well Spongebob works in the 11 minute format. Episodes trimmed down this much feel incomplete in so many ways. Some of the best lines are kept in here, but some of the other best ones weren't in here, so that's disappointing. I like the detail of this close up of Patrick just being a life size drawing of Patrick that looks like the episode. But it's nowhere near as funny with so many of the amazing lines omitted. I wish this one could have been a bit longer, maybe I would have laughed more. Also fun fact, this aired on TV right after episode 495, Knock Knock Who's There from season 12, and this somehow got more views than the episode itself. I have no memories of watching this on TV, while I do remember watching the season 12 episode that premiered that day. 
The next episode recreated is episode 94, Can You Spare a Dime from Season 3. The French narrator's beginning line is still there, but then he cuts straight to Mr. Krabs counting his money at the register and can't find his dime. Squidward and Krabs' dime scene is shortened a lot, and the scene of Spongebob catching the hat isn't there. This visual is kept in, and it's even throbbing which makes it look even more unsettling somehow. Squidward still says he can unlock his potential, but then it cuts straight to him living in the box. Spongebob offers to let Squidward stay with him. After Spongebob tucks Squidward in at night, it just cuts straight to Squid asking Sponge for water and other things. The entire breakfast in bed and pampering scenes are removed from the recreation. Thankfully, these time cards are kept in. This is the first time Gary is shown in this series. After Spongebob comes in with the lemonade, Squidward just immediately asks for his show. The puppet show isn't as good as the one in the original episode. After Spongebob snaps, he pushes Squidward to the crust of Crab and strangles Krabs without trying to give him any dimes. Krabs finds his dime and agrees to let Squidward come back to work. The ending is also a lot shorter compared to the original. Alright, so I think that one was slightly better in terms of what lines were cut out. Most of what was omitted here felt like it was done more thoughtfully compared to Wet Painters and still included what was necessary for the episode to work at all. I think since it was trimmed down to half its regular length, it works fairly well enough with this context. The biggest exclusion in this one is Spongebob slowly getting more and more fucking pissed at Squidward's demands. I do wish we could have seen more of that because it's satisfying seeing Spongebob get angrier at the increasing unreasonableness of Squidward's demands. I do like that they kept in the scenes of Squidward imagining himself as a football player, king, and spaceman. He doesn't have a helmet here, but I'm sure that was because of budget reasons. And like the last one, I don't remember seeing this on TV, although I do remember seeing the new episode that premiered right before it, episode 503, Plankton's Intern from season 12. Next up is the first recreation of a season 2 episode. In this case, episode 48, Dying for Pot. This was the first short to air on TV after releasing on YouTube. This was the short that made me realize Pineapple Playhouse exists. I remember watching this when it premiered right after episodes 512, Under the Small Top, and 513, Squidward Sick Days from season 13. And to an extent, I actually enjoyed these shorts better than the episodes. Yeah, I said it. It starts up with Mr. Krabs talking to Squidward about Employee Brotherhood Day. The dream scene and the shot of Squidward driving were both removed. Sponge gives Squid the eyelash sweater, which Squid rejected. Krabs told Squidward to make a gift, and Squid only agrees to that after seeing this piece of tear sweater. Squidward finds the pirates, and their conversation is trimmed down in this short. Squidward shows Krabs the pie, and Krabs takes a piece of it, which causes an explosion. Spongebob sees the pie and take it while Squid and Krabs aren't looking. Sponge only has until sunset, and Squid decides to help Spongebob enjoy his final hours. Sponge talks about his list, and it cuts to the knock-knock joke. The traded face scene was cut, and so is Squidward remembering Mr. Krabs' words about sunset. Most of the sunset scene itself is still intact, as well as most of the ending scene. Aside from Spongebob and Squidward's explosion lines, and the Bikini Atoll explosion is still live action. So that one was the third short, and that's the best one yet. It's longer than the first two shorts, and the scenes work well for the most part. Some of the best lines are cut, as well as most of the beginning scenes. And I'm sorry guys, but I don't like the look of this sweater or the throbbing heart. Oddly enough, I can handle that more than this image from Can You Spare a Dime. It was because this was the first Pineapple Playhouse short I saw. I don't know. I do know I like how the bomb bubble looks like a clear whoopee cushion. And I also like how the explosion scenes are represented with confetti. That actually works in my opinion. It's also nice they kept the ending explosion with the live action footage intact. I also like how accurate the book looks here. Other than that, I don't really have much to say about this one. Number 4. This recreation is of the camping episode. This one actually starts up at the very beginning, unlike the previous three. But Squidward realizes Spongebob and Patrick are still in the neighborhood much earlier in this short than the original and it takes Squidward less time to misinterpret Spongebob's words. We also don't see Squidward's tent fail to set itself up, or his kicking it and informs itself, and then when it collapses. After that, the marshmallow scene is removed. The astronaut helmets, the roasting marshmallows, the whole shebang. 
It just cuts to SpongeBob starting to sing the Campfire Song song. Roughly the entire musical number is intact, which is something. Squidward plays the clarinet, and SpongeBob and Patrick warn him about the sea bears. The who knew this guy rambling scene is cut too, as well as most of the sea bear warnings. Squidward does everything to attract a sea bear, and SpongeBob draws only half a circle. The sea bear shows up and beats the shit out of Squidward. The first five beatings are kept in, and Squidward joins SpongeBob and Patrick in their circle, which makes the sea bear go away. Then the sea rhinoceros shows up. So with that one, I want to say it's my favorite so far. I do appreciate all the attention to detail, this shot of the marshmallow hitting the back of Squidward's throat, and all the shots that showed the campfire and Spongebob and Squidward's houses in the background when they didn't necessarily need to. And of course, the detail during the music number. But it's also tricky because the part where Spongebob and Patrick do their... is omitted. I get it's because of the helmets, but I don't think it was necessary to remove the whole thing. This is the longest of the shorts yet, so they could have included a bit more here. But I guess we'll come back to this and see if it's my favorite when we get towards the end. Number 5 is the recreation of episode 80, Sandy's Spongebob and the Worm from season 2. And this is the first short that hasn't aired on TV as of September 2024. This one starts off at the Krusty Krab with Spongebob telling everybody about the Alaskan bullworm. The whole night scene is cut. Some lines like what was eaten and some ideas on how to protect themselves were removed. Do I need to say it? We see Sandy for the first time and she's somehow breathing underwater. This shot is disturbing and Sandy reveals her tail is gone. Spongebob leaves with Sandy to stop her and everybody decides to push the town away. Lots of Spongebob's attempts to stop Sandy are removed, as well as the K and U shapes. Sandy beats up the worm's tongue and finds her tail, but Spongebob says the whole thing is the worm, so they run away. After a brief argument, they escape being eaten, and the worm falls off a cliff. Spongebob and Sandy don't die, and the worm crushes Bikini Bottom after it got moved there. Okay, so that one is pretty fine too. Sandy is clearly not seen with a helmet, probably due to budget reasons. My response to that is, why did they set aside a budget for this in the first place? An actual budget was used for the stop motion episodes, episode 335, It's a Spongebob Christmas from season 8, and 420, The Legend of Bukini Bottom from season 11. And that's why Spongebob and Patrick didn't have a helmet in Sandy's tree dome, even though Sandy had a helmet herself for some reason. I appreciate that this kept in the cards for Alaskan Bullworm and Big Scary in Pink. The worm's eyes are kind of unsettling to me in a way I can't describe, and Krabs foaming at the mouth is absolutely disgusting. Overall, this one is okay. Ouch. Next up is episode 85, Just One Bite from Season 3. The first line is Squidward saying he hates Krabby Patties and Spongebob doesn't believe him at first. When he finally realizes Squidward is telling the truth, he tries to get Squidward to try a Krabby Patty, but way less times than in the original. Squid finally gives in and pretends to hate it around Sponge. When he's gone, Squid wants to sneak another one. His attempt to make a fake order for Sponge failed, and this scene was nasty and gave me Mr. Meaty flashbacks. Squidward's dream sequence is still intact, so that's nice. Sponge catches Squid inside the Krusty Krab and realizes the truth. Sponge warns Squid about the patties going to his thighs, but it was too late. Squidward explodes and is rushed to the hospital. Okay, so I think for the most part, this is one of the better shorts. I'm okay with most of what it was cut, but of everything they did remove, why were these shots intact? They are so gross and I can't unsee them. I hated Mr. Meaty, and I hate that this scene reminded me of that show. I like the detail of Spongebob's pupils exploding, I like that the dream sequence was kept in, and honestly, I like this cheeky face more so than the original. Fun fact about this one, all the customers here are finger puppets. Moving on, the last short in quote unquote season 1 is a puppet version of episode 34. ARG from season 1. And this is currently the last one to air on TV in some way. The first thing we see is Spongebob saying he got 8 gold doubloons. Spongebob and Patrick explain the game to Mr. Krabs and he becomes obsessed. 
When it becomes night, SpongeBob and Patrick leave. The scene with Krabs at Sponge's house was omitted, and it cuts to morning where Krabs arrives on the pirate ship talking about the treasure hunt. When they're sailing, the ship hits coral and gets stuck. Wind. Patrick sends them the wrong way, and soon Krabs manipulates Sponge and Pat with emotions. Later that night, SpongeBob and Patrick sneak peeks at the map, and Krabs catches them. The X is floating, and when they dig up the treasure, the Flying Dutchman appears. He gives Sponge and Pat each a gold doubloon, and Krabs a plastic treasure chest, and that's it. So for that one, I think it's good. There's no gross moments, less of my favorite lines were omitted, and I love the fact that the Flying Dutchman appeared in this short. I can actually complain a lot less about what was cut out of this one, so that's impressive. This was also the moment where it was too obvious how low of a budget there was, since the X was floating and SpongeBob and Patrick looked like they're laying at a 40 degree angle instead of on their backs. Overall, it's solid, and that's about it. Moving on to what the YouTube channel refers to as Season 2 of Pineapple Playhouse, the next short is for Episode 83, Club Spongebob from Season 3. And we see actual title cards here instead of them being cropped and only appear at the beginning of all the previous shorts, as well as a bit of an actual opening. Squidward is annoyed at Spongebob and Patrick's secret code. He tries to join their club, but he ended up stuck up there. Squidward tries to climb down, but they get flung away. Squidward is upset about being stuck, but Spongebob and Patrick listen to the magic conch shell. Squidward tries to leave, but almost the whole scene of him being lost is removed. Later, he teases Spongebob and Patrick for listening to the magic conch shell, only for food, shelter, and fire to fall from the sky. Spongebob lets Squidward eat some of the food, but Squidward refuses to talk to the magic conch shell. Then the shell refuses to let Squid eat, and he gets mad. The ranger comes to save them, but he joins the cult since he also has a shell. So Squid gives in reluctantly. Then the show ends with the characters bowing to the audience. Okay, so clearly there's more of an effort put in here already. I like the kelp forest backgrounds, and the movement of Patrick's giant sandwich was humorous. I like how when the characters are far away, they're portrayed as a cutout and not a puppet. I love the detail of Squidward's eyes being bloodshot and the dirt on his shirt and hat. This felt like a bit too much was trimmed out, but several of the lines that were cut out, I'm okay with. Aside from the best line, of course. Dude, we're falling right out of the sky! We gotta drop the load! The next one is episode 67, Welcome to the Chum Bucket from season 2. Krabs tells Sponge that he's going to play cards with Plankton, since Krabs always wins whenever they play. But the next morning, Mr. Krabs lost, and now Spongebob has to work at the Chum Bucket. Spongebob didn't want to, but he had no choice. At the Chum Bucket, Plankton threatens to take out Spongebob's brain and put it in the robot chef. Spongebob is sad, and the music number is here in its entirety. When Plankton talks to Spongebob, the grill moving scene is gone, and we cut to the Krusty Krab replica. Spongebob makes Plankton do other things, the drool makes me want to vomit, and Plankton decides to take Spongebob's brain out anyway. The robot doesn't want to make a Krabby Patty either, so Plankton asks Mr. Krabs to take Spongebob back. He agrees, and Spongebob is back at the Krusty Krab. So this is the first time we see Plankton and Karen in this series, and I like how they pulled them off in this form, especially Plankton. It's like the Plankton plush they used for the Plankton actor in the Spongebob musical. I love how faithfully the music number was recreated here, but I do wish we could have seen the grill pushing scene, that was one of my favorites in the original episode. And the drool is nauseating as usual, moving on. Next up is episode 68, Frankendoodle from season 2. We see the artist at sea, and it's still the live action footage, but the scene is streamlined as usual. When Spongebob and Patrick find the pencil and discover it's magical, Sponge immediately draws Doodle Bob to prank Squidward. Doodle Bob beats up Squid, grabs the pencil, and leaves. The iconic scene with the bowling ball and the wrench is gone, and it cuts to Sponge and Pat immediately trying to surprise Doodle Bob. Doodle throws Sponge, Sponge grabs the pencil and erases most of Doodle, except for an arm. When Sponge goes to sleep, Doodle redraws himself and attacks Sponge. The fight scene is trimmed down as well, and after Sponge defeats Doodle, Sponge and Pat immediately send the pencil back to the surface. The artist at sea gets it back, but it snaps. 
Okay, so I'd say this is probably my favorite from Season 2 of Pineapple Playhouse so far. I love how Faithful Doodlebob looks in this style, and the special effects look the best they've ever looked yet. Aside from the confetti representing the explosions, of course. This shot of Doodlebob on the sheet looks like an HD remastered version of the original shot. The facial expressions on SpongeBob and Patrick are golden throughout. Better yet, no gross scenes either. Moving on, we have episode 89, Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 4 from season 3. We have the French narrator's line at the beginning, and then it cuts to Murray Man and Barnacle Boy spotting SpongeBob and running away. The whole scene of Squidward and Barnacle Boy being all big nose was cut. <laughs> SpongeBob tries to return the belt, but the heroes run away, so SpongeBob keeps it and plays with it. Squidward discovers the truth and tries to tattle, so SpongeBob shrinks it. Sponge can't unshrink him, so they go to Patrick. Pat says Wumbo, and he gets shrunk too. Sandy comes by and gets shrunk, and so does everybody else in town. Murray Man can't figure out how to unshrink everybody, the others beat up Spongebob's internal organs, so he shrinks the town and everybody's content. Plankton returns and sees the town tiny. Okay, so I like how this one creates props for Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. This image with all the eyeballs on Squidward is pretty well done too. The special effects are cool, and I like all the finger puppets created for the other bikini bottomites. But I hate how they omitted the big nose roasts and Larry the Lobster's line at the end. Yeah, what's the difference? If they created puppet props for Murray Man and Barnacle Boy, two characters who haven't had speaking roles since season 9, why can't they create something for Larry? Next up is episode 45, Bossy Boots from season 2. The title card says that this is Season 2, Episode 5 of Pineapple Playhouse, and this is the fourth episode of the regular Season 2. You really couldn't have done this one earlier, so it actually aligned well. Mr. Krabs tells Spongebob and Squidward that his daughter Pearl will be working at the Krusty Krab during the summer. Pearl gives Spongebob the new uniform, and Spongebob likes it. They come up with the new name and decide on the Cuddly Krab. Spongebob likes it until Pearl doesn't allow him to make Krabby Patties anymore. After being in a costume, he tries to tell Mr. Krabs about Pearl ruining the Krusty Krab. Krabs agrees, but he doesn't want to fire Pearl and risk upsetting her. Spongebob agrees, and Pearl says she wanted to get fired in the first place. Spongebob says he'll stage it and take the heat from Krabs, to Pearl's delight. When he fires Pearl, she leaves, and Spongebob says that Pearl took it fine. But Mr. Krabs was still short on money from the decorations, so Spongebob takes them at the cost of one year's salary. But Gary was sad. Did Mr. Krabs really need his money back from that stuff? Alright, so as we can see here, they're clearly getting better at figuring out what lines to cut and keep in with the shorts. Lines like SpongeBob and Squidward's seniority and the Cuddly Crab menu work to be cut out to keep the short flowing. But other than that, I think this is probably the short I have the least to say about. Next up is Pineapple Playlist, which isn't an episode. It's a recreation of some of the iconic songs from Spongebob's history. The first song here is Gary's song from episode 122, Have You Seen This Snail from season 4. Well, half of it. After the record player, it cuts to the photo album. They also recreated the fun song from episode 21, F.U.N. from season 1, the campfire song song from the camping episode, this Grill is Not a Home from Welcome to the Chum Bucket, and the Krusty Krab Pizza song from Episode 10, Pizza Delivery from Season 1. Out of all of these, I like Gary's song the most since it's the only Season 4 media in this series of shorts, and it has the best attention to detail in the whole Pineapple Playhouse series in my opinion. <laughs> Moving on, we have Episode 102, Chocolate with Nuts from Season 3. Chocolate. Spongebob scares the mailman and looks at Squidward's magazine. Spongebob and Patrick decide to sell chocolate bars. They encounter Tom and the con man twice, but nothing goes well. They decide to start stretching the truth to sell chocolate. These two scenes are removed entirely. We then see Mary and her mother and sell chocolate to them. Then they got out conned by the con man. Tom caught up with them and bought all their chocolate. It then cuts to Squidward at the restaurant Fancy finding out that it was rented out by Spongebob and Patrick for the night. Okay, so this one is pretty good too, I think. I love that they brought in Lazy Mary and her mother, and the prop of the latter looks pretty accurate to how she appears in the show. 
The effects of this one are really well done too, and I like the look of the con man all banged up, and the barnacle chips billboard. Last up is pizza delivery. At the Krusty Krab, Mr. Krabs takes the phone from Squidward and makes pizza for Spongebob and Squidward to deliver. The vehicle inspection was cut, and Spongebob backed up so far that the boat ran out of gas in the middle of nowhere. When they had to deliver it on foot, these two scenes were removed altogether, and it cuts to Spongebob finding moss on a rock. Spongebob sings the Krusty Krab pizza song, but soon they start to get weak from hunger. Spongebob refuses to let Squidward eat the pizza, and then found a rock they could drive back to town. When they arrived at the customer's house, he doesn't want the pizza because they forgot his drink. Spongebob was sad, so Squidward stands up to the customer and throws the pizza at him. Spongebob and Squidward make it back to work, much to Squidward's disdain. Okay, for the current final short in this series, that was pretty solid too. I think that's now my new favorite from the Season 2 episodes of Pineapple Playhouse. The special effects here were at their best, and so was the attention to detail, especially during the song. I like how Spongebob and Squidward are drawings on a stick during wide shots like this one. And the tears here didn't actually make me feel sick, unlike the drool or the foaming at the mouth, so that's remarkable. They even included the very last line, Oh, my aching tentacles. Which was infamously removed from later airings of this episode on TV. This also shows a time lapse of the set being built when you watch this on YouTube at the very end, so that's kind of neat. Alright, so as a whole, I think the Spongebob's Pineapple Playhouse series is kinda neat and charming. They feel cool and actually gave me Muppets vibes the first time I saw one on TV. But the more I watch, the more I just wish I was watching the Muppets instead of these. The gross out scenes are really bad and reminded me of Mr. Meaty, and I didn't think that that would ever enter my mind again until now. As the shorts went on, the crew got better on what lines to cut out when recreating them, and the effects got a lot neater. I'd say my favorite episode recreation was the camping episode, with pizza delivery being a close second. Other than that, all the episodes kind of blend together in my eyes. I'd say overall, Pineapple Playlist was the best because of the songs, but it's odd that this had the Krusty Krab pizza song when it came out before the pizza delivery short. And it's even more strange that they never remade anything from season 4 onwards. Since they did Gary's song, why couldn't they do anything from Dunces and Dragons? Or Krusty Towers? Anything beyond season 3? ANYTHING? That would have been cool. It's also even more strange that they did the songs from FUN and Have You Seen the Snail, but didn't recreate any other scenes from those episodes. I think my favorite character prop was Squidward. Spongebob is a close second, and Mr. Krabs is my least favorite. His prop always having eyelids on his upper eyes make him feel so soulless and emotionless in my opinion. If that was the only way they could keep his eyelashes on, then they should have just not included the eyelashes at all. I probably would have liked that better. I really wish they would have made a prop for Larry the Lobster to be used in the shorts. If they did it for Pearl, Murray Man, Barnacle Boy, the con man of all characters, and Squilliam, why couldn't they make one for Larry? Larry appeared in one of the actual episodes, so why didn't he appear in the recreations? Overall, I do think these were cool little shorts, but since they only did 14 episodes and a music playlist, I kind of question why they did this at all. All of them were only released on YouTube and not on home media, they didn't come out during an anniversary year for this show, and the episodes they chose were a little strange when you looked at them all together. I like seeing the effort put into this, but in the end, it almost didn't feel worth it. It almost feels like they were trying to capture the same audience that loves the Muppets, and to that I say, why are they trying this hard to get a new audience? I forgot about most of them immediately after watching them, so that says it all right there. Also, why they called it Pineapple Playhouse is the worst part of the whole series, because this series of shorts has nothing to do with pineapples or playhouses. They should have called it Spongebob's Muppets. But maybe that would have gotten them sued because Disney owns the Muppets name. Either way, I should sue for false advertising. 